Hello there. Welcome to another language presentation. In this presentation, our focus is Laplace transform, in particular, a state space representation parting from the transfer function. I hope by now the concept of transfer function is clear to you. So I'm going to take the following example to see how we can migrate from state space from transfer function to state space representation the form called controllable canonical form. We have the following example. We consider a system initially at rest, initially at rest, specifically precisely states that the initial conditions are as follows. Now it's a whole to zero where u of t is input and x of t is the output and the system in this case is described by the following differential equation so first of all we're going to try to get the transfer function of this system which is normally denoted by a g of s uh, some people tend to use p, but uh, I think the standard is accessible to use s as the complex variable for Laplace uh, transformation. So in this case, to get g of x, which at the moment we're searching for, we need to apply the Laplace transform to the differential equation. For that, we need to remember that the Laplace transform of a derivative, let's say dx dt, is given by s multiplied by the Laplace transform of the time signal, which was differentiated, minus the initial value of the time signal. And if we were dealing with the second derivative, we saw that. This is equals to, we need to get the from a second derivative with respect to t. This will be equals to s squared multiplied by x of s minus s initial value multiplied by s minus s multiplied by the initial value of the signal minus the initial value of the derivative of the signal. So now, if, like I said here, that the initial values are all zero, which means these values will be zero, zero, and zero. Similarly, for ut, the ut at zero will be zero. So now, transforming this, uh, applying Laplace transform to the equation, now as the applied Laplace transform form to the whole equation, what I'm going to get for the first term will be s squared x of s plus 7 s x of s plus 6 x of s equals to s u of s plus um, 3 u of s. And then you can see that on both sides we've got common factors, so we can uh, extract s of s here as a common factor, and then we've got x squared plus 7s plus 6 in brackets equals to u of s in brackets s plus now to get to the plus of, uh, transfer, uh, the transfer function, remember the transfer function is actually in, involved in the expressing the input-output relationship that g of x is always equals to y, sorry, in this case x of s the input over u of s. So to get such an expression here, I think it's clear that 
we need to divide both sides by u of x and uh, lastly divide both sides by this bracket which will give us x of s over u of x equals 2 now dividing by this bracket on both sides we get s plus 3 over s squared plus 7 s 7 s plus 6 and now this would be our transfer function g of x and we note that the denominator here is factorizable this would be s over s plus 3 over s plus 1 multiplied by x plus uh, 6. Remember we said initially that this s variable is actually a complex entity of the form s equals 2 sigma plus um, i omega where omega is equals to 2 pi f which actually tells us that this is a frequency domain representation of uh, the signal now what you can see here is that the poles of this uh, system are actually on the left hand side of the vertical axis which will spell that the system is stable to get the poles of a system like this we just take the denominator s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 6 and the equity to 0 and we can see clearly here that we're going to get that s is equals to minus 1 or s is equal to minus 6 so these two numbers are the poles of the system are the poles of the system and as you can see they are on the left hand side of the x axis on the complex plane sorry then on the left hand side of the y axis on the complex plane is you put x here uh, y there minus one will be somewhere there and the minus six will be somewhere there. so when this happens when the poles are on the left hand side of the y axis we will say the system is stable so now we've got now the the transfer function as given uh, as we've uh, read it here now we need to see how we part from the transfer function and get to the state space representation having state uh, having the transfer function as g of x here what you need to know now to get to state space representation now step by step what i would advise first of all since we see that uh, our um, system is a second order system because of the power of s here we need to declare a state space vector in this case which we can call x and the state space vector is going to have two components x1 and x2 so in our case here we are dealing with vectors which we can say they are in two dimension space in this case r2 so we can tell us this is an r2 so then after that to achieve the type of state space representation which we said is controllable canonical form what you need to do is uh, the following we know here that uh, this is uh, y this is sorry x of s over u of s which is equals to s plus 3 over s squared plus 7 s plus 6 so what I'm going to do here, we're going to multiply here by y of s over 
y of s and also multiplying you with a, a special one this variable we're using here just as a helping variable to achieve what we want to do so if we do this multiply the numerator we're going to get here that x of s is equal to s y of s um, plus 3 y of s and on the other hand we're going to have u of s equals to s squared y of s plus 7 s y of s plus 6 y of s so this will be the representation of the input and the output in the frequency domain so what i want to do here we're going to migrate this via inverse laplace transform we're going to get uh, x of t now we're inverting this first line here x of t equals to um y prime that is function of t plus uh, 3 y of t the second line here the input to u of t equals to and uh, y second of t now the second derivative plus 7 y so y prime of t plus 6 y of t now once you've done that now we must present our input and our output there now what i'm going to do now using our state space vector here we're going to let so we let uh, um, x1 be equals to, to y of t and then x1 prime will be equals to y prime of t which is going to give us x Now, if we, we declare this this way, which means here what we have, we have, we have got u of t equals to x2 plus, so x2 dot plus 7 x2 plus 6 x1 now using this now what we can do is the following we need not need to reorganize this now and write it as follows we have here x1 prime equals to x2 and according to this we can make x2 a subject subject of formula we're going to get x2 prime equals to minus 6 x1 plus minus 7 x2 plus u of t now putting that here we can have this as x2 prime x2 prime equals to minus 6 x x1 minus 7 x2 plus um, u u of t what you can see now putting them in line like this you can see that here we've got 0 x1 you can write it like that 
for the first time just to see this thing very clearly. 0x1, and there we've got 0 u, ut. So now we need to also see that here we've got xt, which is our output. We can write it as follows our xt is actually equals to 3x1 plus x x2. Now, what you need to you know, remember to represent this um, system in uh, state space representation, we need to have a matrix A and a matrix uh, B, whereby we can now represent the equation as x dot equals to A multiplied by the state vector plus B multiplied by the input. This is a column vector, same vector in the same, in the same dimension like this one. Then what I want to do now is the following. I hope you can see that here, up to there, and there, we are, can be able to generate something like this. So we're going to write here x prime 1, x prime 2. Look, it is a vector like this. That will be equals to this A, consider the coefficients of x1, x2 here, which will be 0, uh, 1 minus 6 minus 7, close the bracket here, multiplied by the state vector, which is x1, x2, close the plus, and here we're going to have 0, and the one, and then this will be multiplied by our input, u of t. Our output x is going to be presented as follows. It's going to be equals to three, uh, three, three, one, which is actually the transpose of a vector of this form. In uh, this end, this is our uh, choice to show that you say now x here should be equal to some c column vector transposed multiplied by x. So, what we're going to have here, we're going to have this multiplied by x, which is our state vector x1 by x2. Now, if you look at what we put here, is exactly what you have here, whereby our capital X dot is this column vector here, our A is given by 0, 1, minus 6, that multiplied by column vector, and our B is a column vector, so is that, and the X equals to 3, 1, multiplied by this column vector. So this would be our state space representation of the type controllable canonical form. I hope this serves as, as an example. Now, what we can do is to try to take similar examples and try to see if we can repeat this, and then we can say you've learned how to determine state space representation. In our next pre presentation, we're going to present what we call observable canonical form, which is got a, a different approach. Actually, what we will learn in this case that if a system we've got a state space representation, the state space representation is not unique. We will see that this same type of system we're going to also presented in a slightly different way. In other words, the matrices will be different using what we call observable canonical form. Others for now, I would like to say thank you for listening.